Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This week on Teen Wolf, they paid off the young Derek plot, as well as teased the main villain of season four, the benefactor. There were a few funny moments, but the Kate story ended up turning into something totally different. Before we get started though, hello to any new people who are just finding me for the first time. I'm going to be doing weekly Teen Wolf videos for each episode. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'm even going to try and do some bonus videos too, so feel free to leave me suggestions for like Teen Wolf lore topics to do. So I was really glad that they resolved the big mystery of young Derek from episode one, but because the real story was something totally different, we're going to need to spend most of our time talking about that. So what I'm going to do is my top five moments, then a quick breakdown of that new character that they introduced, the benefactor, and talk about what he's going to be doing this season, and then my overall review. So careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet. I'll wait a couple seconds. Everybody ready? Okay, here we go. Number five, Malia meets Peter. So in case you missed it last season, Malia is Peter's biological daughter. Her mother was Mrs. Tate, married to Mr. Tate. Her mother just had an affair with Peter, but she was raised as Mr. Tate's daughter. Everyone thought she died, but then in season three, she appeared after living as a coyote for years. Cut to now, where she's failing at history class in the most adorable way possible, trying to learn how to be human again. Her meeting Peter was huge, though. Peter knew exactly who she was, but she still doesn't know that he's her father. So traveling back to a little bit earlier in the episode, remember when Scott was telling Styles that truth was always the best route to take? I feel like them not telling Malia that Peter's her father is going to literally bite them in the ass later this season. I mean, she would probably bite someone in the ass. I felt like I saw some Peter vibes coming off of Malia though. It was a lot of fun. She's got a lot of his rage and impulsiveness. Peter's a little bit more subtle, you know, just having the benefit of a couple years of experience, but I can totally see his subconscious presence inside of her. Not like whenever he was controlling Lydia, but just shades of him behind her eyes. I feel like there's a high likelihood that because of that connection, she'll betray the pack for Peter whenever she does learn the truth. I think that Styles is like her anchor to the real world. So if she were ever forced to choose between Peter and the pack, I think that, you know, the outcome would depend a lot on her relationship with Styles at the moment. It would be fun to see Styles try and win her back. Doesn't it kind of seem like anyone associated with the Hale family gets tied up in a betrayal plot sooner or later? Even Derek, who was BFFs with Scott last season, had been an antagonist before that. So definitely a high probability of Malia flip-flopping this season. Number four, Kate wants to learn to control her shifting. It was a little confusing. Kate was being manipulated just like she was manipulating young Derek. She really did want the Triskelion so she could control her shifting. And yes, I do think she'll listen to Peter's advice and figure it out on her own eventually. It's actually been a while since I've thought about that symbol on Teen Wolf, so whenever I heard Peter call it out, I thought of the Triskelion on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. On that show, it's basically a large base that also doubles as a prison for supervillains. The Hale family's Triskelion means a bunch of different things. Usually each time it shows up, like in Season 1, Season 2, Season 3, it's a metaphor for something different. In Greek and Celtic mythology, it typically represents the stages of life, like birth, life, death, and the stages of the moon, new, half, full. In this episode for Derek and Kate, I think it just represented past, present, and future, just because of their previous relationship and Derek's physical transformation. You know, he literally had gone into the past. For Peter and Malia, I think it represented mother, father, daughter. You know, it's all about progression, family, relationships. Which is basically what this episode was foreshadowing. You know, a lot of the future relationships and the intergroup dynamics. Number three, Lydia's powers start to manifest more. So Lydia spacing out into Banshee mode and finding the murder scene is going to keep happening until she learns to control her powers, just like Kate's trying to learn to control her shifts. It's like they're on the same path, they're trying to master their two states of existence, you know, supernatural and natural. I like that they use the cell phone pictures for comedy. It wouldn't be Lydia if they didn't try to make a joke out of it. I feel like her comedic powers actually exist in direct relationship with her proximity to Styles. You know, the closer they drift together, the funnier it gets. But I cannot imagine how sticky that bathroom got after they filmed that scene. In some of the trailers, we actually saw scenes of Lydia investigating other murders. So this idea goes into the benefactor and the Deadpool list, which I'll totally explain in a second. But there are going to be a lot of serial killings going on. For Lydia, it's going to be like moth to flame. Until she learns to control her powers, she's going to keep spacing out and showing up at dead bodies. I like that they used the bathroom for this first big kill in this episode. I kind of thought it was a callback to the bathroom in episode one, the one that Kate refused to kill herself in. That also kind of becomes a callback to the Calaveries because I feel like they're going to come on the show pretty soon too. Number two, young Derek transforms back into old Derek. So this was another logic jump the show is asking you to make, but remember he was transforming back while he was going ape shit on the berserkers. Who knew that young Derek was so good at Krav Maga and parkour? This was all happening while Peter was explaining how to use anger to control shifting. 
it made me think that young Derek just trapped into some sort of primal rage and that's what caused him to revert back to normal. The only issue I had with this was that they didn't really explain the mechanics of young Derek really well. Like what kind of spell did Kate use to make his body and mind revert to a younger state and if young Derek could transform into old Derek using raw motion, how come old Derek couldn't do the same thing in reverse? Feel free to write your theories about that in the comments below, but I feel like whenever Styles' dad was freaking out about it, it was just the writers telling us, the viewers, not to try and poke too many holes in it. And my number one moment, the benefactor reveals himself. It's a bit of a deus ex machina, but the person at the end is the benefactor. He's the main villain this season and the one who used Kate to get the bearer bonds. So there were all kinds of questions that popped up in those last couple of minutes, but I have a few theories about why he stole that money. Creator Jeff Davis was talking about the idea of the Deadpool list this season. It's a kill list of all the supernatural creatures living in Beacon Hills. The benefactor is behind it, or will be behind it, and I think he's going to use those bear bonds to finance the kills. Whenever someone kills a name on the list, he has to pay them a lot of money, so that has to come from somewhere. Joseph Gatt is the actor listed as playing the benefactor on IMDb. In case you didn't see it, he played a warg on Game of Thrones Season 4. You can't tell from this picture, but he is super huge, like as big as one of those berserkers. So it's totally unclear why he wants to kill all the supernatural creatures in Beacon Hills, but it does allow us to eliminate some familiar villain faces, like Peter for instance. It seemed like he genuinely flipped out whenever that money was stolen. Wouldn't it be crazy if this was like Usual Suspects and he was just the verbal Kent, like the Kevin Spacey character that secretly turned out to be Kaiser Soze and just be behind everything? I don't think that's what's going on, but I do like the idea of Peter being the Loki of the series, you know, the constant trickster. You can never trust your ears or your eyes whenever he's around. He's always working some sort of long con to regain alpha status. Remember, his eyes still glow blue, not alpha red. So now it's your turn. Let me know in the comments below, what was your favorite moment and why do you think the benefactor wants to kill all the supernatural creatures? And do you think that it's going to cause some sort of mega alliance to form? You have to remember that there's a lot more than werewolves in Beacon Hills. So real quick, here's a couple of things that I thought were really important but didn't necessarily make it into my top five. First off, the pairings. I love the way that they mixed and matched characters from last episode. Last week it was Kira and Malia, this week we saw Kira go off with Lydia, and I really like the way pairing people brings unexpected energy, like whenever Malia went off with Scott and then Peter had what was probably the funniest line in the episode. We're not exactly a brain trusted geniuses here. So you wouldn't get that if Styles had gone off with Scott, because he is the genius. I'm really looking forward to more Malia Peter scenes. We still need to see Styles and Kira get some moments. Actually, I take that all back. Malia and Lydia are who I want to see together next. They could go all Scooby Doo on a crime scene together. The Kira Scott relationship is developing. It's probably going to take the longest to go anywhere, but I do think it will go somewhere. Malia and Styles are definitely a thing. And Styles and Lydia are like the sexless old couple that just crack jokes. Or maybe like buddy cops that have an unconsummated relationship. I do feel like Styles and Lydia would make a great True Detective Season 2. After the last couple of episodes, Malia's become my favorite character. She's got all the right qualities to kick butt while getting herself into hilarious situations and stay adorable while she's making a mess of things. Like History Class, for instance, she's like a puppy and you cannot get mad at a puppy. Scott's still on the path to becoming a leader even though he's a true alpha. The whole history speech about great leaders failing greatly was foreshadowing for him. It's not really a spoiler since Jeff Davis explained the new character Liam, but Scott's going to have a beta pretty soon. So I don't know the circumstances around Scott creating a new werewolf, creating the beta, but remember what the Calavarius said, the minute he turned someone else and made a new werewolf, they'd come for him. So eventually, they'll show up, for better or worse. Hopefully they'll help out with Kate while they're there. So overall, I thought the episode was a solid B+. It did a good job of wrapping up the Derek plot, even though it defied a little bit of logic. And it set up a lot of what the group dynamics and the character arcs are going to be going forward. We have Detective Banshee, failed leader, made stronger by the experience, and a lot of romantic ships. We also still need to meet those new freshman characters, the lacrosse players. That's probably going to happen in episode 3. But in the meantime, I'm going to be doing a bonus video for next Monday. Be sure to subscribe to get it. It's going to be like a bonus lore video for the Triskelion, for like the history of the Triskelion, the Greek and Celtic mythology. But feel free to leave me a suggestion for another topic. Right now, though, click here to get my review of episode one and click here to get my personal q and I actually did a bunch of personal questions that you guys asked me at VidCon. It was a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.